Hi, my name is Eli Kawert. I'm a data scientist and I'll be your instructor. In this course, you'll be learning about tree-based models for classification and regression. In chapter one, you'll be introduced to a set of supervised learning models known as classification and regression tree, or CART. In chapter two, you'll understand the notions of bias variance trade-off and model ensembling. Chapter three, introduces you to bagging and random forests. Chapter four deals with boosting, specifically with ADA boost and gradient boosting. Finally, in chapter five, you'll understand how to get the most out of your models through hyperparameter tuning. Given a labeled dataset, a classification tree learns a sequence of if-else questions about individual features in order to infer the labels. In contrast to linear models, trees are able to capture nonlinear relationships between features and labels. In addition, trees don't require the features to be on the same scale through standardization, for example. To understand trees more concretely, we'll try to predict whether a tumor is a malignant or benign in the Wisconsin breast cancer dataset using only two features. The figure here shows a scatter plot of two cancerous cell features with malignant tumors in blue and benign tumors in red. When a classification tree is trained on this dataset, the tree learns a sequence of if-else questions with each question involving one feature and one split point. Take a look at the tree diagram here. At the top, the tree asks whether the concave point's mean of an instance is smaller or equal to 0.051. If it is, the instance traverses the true branch. Otherwise, it traverses the false branch. Similarly, the instance keeps traversing the internal branches until it reaches an end. The label of the instance is then predicted to be that of the prevailing class at that end. The maximum number of branches separating the top from an extreme end is known as the maximum depth, which is equal to two here. Now that you know what a classification tree is, let's fit one with scikit-learn. First, import decision tree classifier from sklearn tree as shown in line one. Also, import the functions train test split from sklearn model selection and accuracy score from sklearn metrics. In order to obtain an unbiased estimate of a model's performance, you must evaluate it on an unseen test set. To do so, first split the data into 80% train and 20% test using train test split. Set the parameter stratify to Y in order for the train and test sets to have the same proportion of class labels as the unsplit dataset. You can now use decision tree classifier to instantiate a tree classifier, DT, with a maximum depth of two by setting the parameter max depth to two. Note that the parameter random state is set to one for reproducibility. Then call the fit method on DT and pass X train and Y train. To predict the labels of the test set, call the predict method on DT. Finally, print the accuracy of the test set using accuracy score. To understand the tree's predictions more concretely, let's see how it classifies instances in the feature space. A classification model divides the feature space into regions where all instances in one region are assigned to only one class label. These regions are known as decision regions. Decision regions are separated by surfaces called decision boundaries. The figure here shows the decision regions of a linear classifier. Note how the boundary is a straight line. In contrast, as shown here on the right, a classification tree produces rectangular decision regions in the feature space. This happens because at each split made by the tree, only one feature is involved. Now, let's practice. 